Nova Kids Academy Online Lesson. I am Ukot Geoffrey, your basic technology teacher. Today we'll be looking at the topic isometric drawing. Now, have you ever tried to draw a three-dimensional object such as a cube on a two-dimensional plane, just like a paper or the drawing board? This can be a bit challenging. A sketcher or a painter may use some techniques such as shadowing to make the image look real as possible. But in basic technology or technical drawing, we use some techniques and one of these techniques is what we have on the board today, isometric drawing. Now let's take a look at what isometric drawing is all about. Isometric drawing is a pictorial representation of designs and drawing in three dimensions. If you don't call it isometric drawing, you can also call it isometric projections. This type of drawing is mostly used by engineers and illustrators that specialize in technical drawings. It is, a sim it is simple to draw a two-dimensional object on paper because paper has two dimensions only, which is the uh, height and the width. But pictorial drawing or three-dimensional drawings have a third dimension, which is the depth. In isometric drawing, we can represent all the three dimensions on a paper, which is a two-dimensional shape. The three dimensions are represented as three axes. One of the axes is the vertical axis, and you have two horizontal axes. You can see it here in the picture. Look at this, the vertical axis, you can see the line traveling up, and you can see those other inclined lines, which are the two horizontal axes. Now you see that the vertical axis is perpendicular to, we have the baseline here, and you can see that just like you plan in your mathematics line on uh, angle on a line rather is 180 degree. You can see from zero down to 180 degree here. Now, if you take a look at this, you see that this angle here is 30 degree. You also have another angle here, 30 degree. But the angle from this vertical uh, line to the uh, baseline is uh, angle 90 degree. Now, if you take this uh, horizontal axis up here, and you measure the value of the angles, you are going to see that each of these angles is going to give you 120 degrees, as you can see in this other picture. These two horizontal axes are moved to this point, or you can bring this vertical axis down here, then you check the angles, you see that you are going to have each of those angles as 120 degrees. This is known as isometric axis. Now, for us to draw an isometric drawing, we must make use of some uh, instruments and material. Now remember there's a difference between drawing instruments and material. We have some drawing instruments here and material that we are going to use to draw isometric drawing. The first one I have with me here is C-square. Remember we have two types of C-square. This is 30 by 60 degrees C-square. Now if you look at this C-square, it's triangular in shape and definitely have three angles. Now the smallest angle here is angle 30 degree. You have this other angle which is angle 60 degree and you have angle 90 degree here. We use this C-square for isometric drawing. If we have another C-square here. This is called 45 degree by 45 degree C-square. Here we don't need this for the construction of isometric, but when you talk about other types of pictorial drawing, such as the oblique drawing or projection, we make use of this C-square which carries angle 45 degree here, 45 degree here, and 90 degrees. Now you see that those two C-squares that I've shown you have a common angle, which is angle 90 degree. You have angle 90 degree here, and you also have another angle 90 degree here. Sorry for that. You have another angle 90 degree here. Remember, this is 30 by 60 degree C-square, and this is 45 degree C-square. Now, when drawing uh, isometric drawing, you still have to make use of your T-square. This is what we call T-square. It is made of the stock or the head and the blade. Now, you use this on your board after setting your paper to draw isometric drawing. As we'll be drawing, trying to draw, see some examples, you'll see how we we'll make use of the uh, T-square, sorry, and the C-square to draw isometric drawing. As the uh, protractor, the protractor is used to measure angles, of course, 
and it's used to draw angles. You can see how it is calibrated from uh, zero here down to the 180 at the right hand side and also from zero at the right hand side down to 180. You can either read it from clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. This is the compass or a pair of compass as we may call it. We use this to draw cycles, semicycles, or arcs. In this very topic, we may not necessarily make use of this, but just take note that this is also a drawing instrument. Now, this other one I have with me here is uh, known as the divider. We use this to transfer dimensions on a drawing. Now, if you want to draw maybe 20 millimeter, instead of trying to use your ruler to draw on your drawing board, you can just pick this divider and use it to take the angle, uh, sorry, the, the measurement from your ruler, then transfer it to the drawing board. Uh, let's take a look at some examples of isometric drawings. You can see that we have um, two isometric blocks here, this first one and this other second one. Now we are going to learn how to draw this isometric uh, uh, block or drawing here uh, using our drawing instruments and materials. Now what makes isometric actually different from other pictorial drawings such as the oblique um, perspective and even the isometric pro uh, projection? Uh, if you look at this now you see that this angle is at 30 degree, this other one too is at 30 degree. But when you're talking about oblique drawing, you see that one of the angles is inclined at 45 degree. Okay? It's not 30 degree. Now, but in isometric, you have an angle 30, 30, and this other vertical one that is 90 degree. Now, let's start. We are going to start with this first one. So, the first thing you are going to do is to draw the baseline. You can see an horizontal baseline here. Okay, this line with the black marker here. So you start with that line. So you pick, since you cannot possibly use your uh, T-square at home, you make use of your ruler as your T-square. But when you are working with drawing board, it's necessary you make use of your T-square. Okay, so since we cannot use T-square at on the body, I'm going to make use of this ruler to ask my T-square to help me construct the isometric on the board. So the first thing I'll do is to draw a horizontal line. So I'll set my ruler on the board and then draw horizontal line, okay? This line serves as this baseline, okay? It's the same line. So, after drawing the line, the next thing to do, very important, is to choose a point where you are going to start your isometric drawing. So, if you look at this now, you see that point A, yeah, is resting on this horizontal line, and that is where the drawing starts from. Start from this down and started going up. So, we are going to start from this point here, point A, which is in contact with this horizontal line. So we choose point A here. Yeah? Let's call this our A. Okay? So after choosing the point, you can see that this line AB, line AC, and line AD is connected to this point here. Line AB is connected to this point here. Line AD is connected to this point here. And line AC is also connected to the point here. So you can choose to start from any line. Out of these three lines, you can choose any one. You can choose to start from line AD, you can choose to start from line AB or line AC, depending on your choice. So let's start with line AD, which is a vertical line. So for us to draw line AD here, yeah, you set your ruler so that it corresponds to that horizontal line that you've drawn. When you've done that, you pick your set square. Remembering we are dealing with isometric, and when you are drawing isometric, you must make use of angle 30. You can see we have 30 degree here, 30 degree here, and the other vertical line, which is perpendicular to this, is angle 90 degree. So we make use of angle 30 degree and 90 degree only for isometric drawing. So this set square carries both 30, 60, and 90 degree, but we are going to make use of only the 30 degree and 90 degree side of the set square. So after setting this, since we are drawing AD, which is a vertical line, so you set your set uh, square like this. You can either set it this way to get a perpendicular line, or you can set it this other way to also get a perpendicular line. So you draw a line from that point upward. Okay, you've seen that. You can either set it this way to draw the line, or you can set it this way to draw the line. Okay, you can see that we have a straight line going up. So we are done. You can see that we have. Uh, line AD. And if you look at the drawing, you see that we have dimensions attached to the drawing. We have that this line AD, which is also parallel to line BE, and also parallel to line CG, 
is 40 millimeter. Okay? Now, all dimensions here are in millimeter. So, whatever you are doing, you are working with millimeter, not centimeter, not inch. Okay? So, this line, this line, and this line are all parallel to each other. Okay? So, we have AD, which is parallel to BE as 40 millimeter. Okay? So, you have to measure 40 millimeter. But if you don't want to do that now, you can also draw line AB and line AC at once before you start measuring. So let's just draw line AB and line AC. For us to draw our line AB, you can see line AB here. Yeah? Okay, the dimension is also given as 40. You also reset that ruler and make sure it corresponds to that horizontal line you first draw. Okay, when you have it, okay, if the ruler shape, you have to reset it. Like if you have something like this, don't just keep it like this and place your set if you are going to have an, uh, an error at the end of the day. So you make sure you set it and make sure it corresponds to that line. So you have this. Then you are going to draw line AB. To draw line AB, see that line AB is traveling to the right hand side. So you set your set square this way. See that my ruler of check and I have to reset it back before I start or continue with any other thing. So, I've done that and I set my set sphere and I slide it. See, I'll have to slide it until this edge where we have angle type, we will get to that point A. So, when we get to point A, you hold it with one hand, you can see I'm holding it with one hand, and the other hand, my right hand side, I'm using it to hold my marker. So, you draw a line traveling to the right hand side. Okay? So, when you're done with that, you remove the set sphere. You can turn it the other way around. Just keep turning your set sphere. Okay? See, I turn it this way, now you can see that I'm trying to draw line AC, okay? So trying to draw line AC, I hold it this way. Make sure you set it so that the edge will correspond to that point A. You see that my ruler has shaped, and it's very important you set it back before you continue. All right, so I've done that, and I'll draw my next line, okay? So now you see that I've gotten my line AD, my line AB, and my line AC. This is line AB going this way, line AC going this other way, and line uh, AD going up. So we have to take the measurements now before we continue. You see that line AD is given here to be 40 millimeter. So you have to make use of the ruler now. Click the ruler. Then you measure. 40 millimeter. Now let's assume that from here to here is our 40 millimeter. Okay, I believe you can read uh, the, the calibration on your ruler. This is 40 millimeter. We assume that from here to here is our point uh, D. This is our point AD. So we have D here. Okay, and we assume that, assume that this line is 40 millimeter. Line AD is 40 millimeter. So you also measure some the other part. You can use your divider. Since all these lines are this equal, you can just pick one side, which is 40 millimeter. When you pick one side with your with your divider, this 40, you just transfer it to line A B. So you place it A and take it to this other line. So you have here to be line. AB, which is also 40 millimeter. So you, you take it from A2 to the left other side, and you see that from here to here will give you uh, 40 millimeter. So you have that to be line AC. Okay? So let's take note. We have uh, three points now. Okay? That is point D, C, and B. So from now, here yeah, now you can continue with the other line. If you take a look at the drawing again, you see that you have another line that is connected to line B. Yeah, that is line uh, point B here. Yeah, you have line BE. You have um, um, line CG also here. Yeah. Then you have another two lines connected to point D. So let's start with uh, the two lines that are connected to point D. Yeah, you can see point D here. Yeah. Okay? So you see that this line and this line, they are connected to this line here. Yeah. Okay? And you've seen that we've already drawn this line. So let we continue with this other line. So you also pick your ruler and your set square. The usual thing we always do, you set your ruler 
so that it corresponds to that horizontal line, it must correspond to that line before it continue any other thing. Okay? So you take your time to do that. When you've done that successfully, then you pick your cell square. The same cell square you are using 30 by 60 degrees cell square. Okay? Sorry for that. Alright, so when you've done that, you hold it with one hand and you place your cell square. The same way you draw line A B. You place a set square that way. See, this is how we draw our line AB. So the same way we are going to draw line uh, DE, which is also parallel to line AB. So you slide it until you get to that point uh, D, then you draw another line traveling to the right hand side. You turn it this way and slide it until you get to that point D, then you draw another line traveling to your left hand side. Okay? Now you don't need to remove your uh, ruler, you can just continue since you have uh, line CG and line uh, BE at the right and this one at the left. So you, uh, you can, we can continue with line BE which is at the right hand side. So we already, already have our point B here. So we can just set our set square this way. Alright, when you set it this way, you slide it until you get to point B. When you get to point B, you draw the line of uh, BE, as you can see there, all right? So, you don't need to remove two, you can continue with this other line, CG, which is at the left hand side. You set your set square the same way, and you slide it until you get to point C. Remember, the dimension is uh, 40 millimeter, then you draw a vertical line to upward, okay? So you can see we are progressing. We've drawn uh, line BE, yeah? We've gotten our line C, CG here, yeah? okay, that's correct. We've gotten our line CG here, yeah? okay, and we have our line AD, which is the first line we draw. So now what is remaining now is this line GF and line um, EF, okay? So let's finish up now. For us to do that too, it's always important. The first thing to do, set your ruler. When you are not working with the drawing board, you make use of your ruler, you set your ruler and make sure it corresponds to that horizontal line. Okay, you can see? Make sure it corresponds to that line. If not, you will definitely get an error. So now when you've done that, you set your cell square also this way. Slide it until you get to point E. We are trying to draw line EG. And you can see that it's moving from E upward to F. So we are going to draw line EF now. So you can see we have point E here. So we draw the line this way. Okay, you can see that the line is not long enough, so we can possibly uh, set our set square this way. You can set it this way, as if you are going to redraw this line AD. Okay, when you have it correctly done, then you hold the, the ruler, then you still place a set square that same way, then you continue so that you have a long line there. You can see that. So when you're done with that, we've gotten our line EF, okay? The last line there is our line GF, okay? I believe you can do that. So you just need to rotate your set square this way, place it this way, and slide it until you get to point G. You can see that the line is moving from G to F2. So you slide it until you get to point G. When you get to point G, you hold it with one hand, and then complete the lines. Okay, that is simple enough, all right? So, now take a look at it. You can see that all these lines, the extension lines, you just need to use them for your dimension line. So you look at the drawing given to you, then you start inserting your dimensions. Okay? So for you to insert your dimension, make sure you look at this line. You see that this line, which is for the dimension line, is parallel to line this line BE. So you make sure that your dimension lines are also parallel to the lines you are trying to show the dimension. Okay? Don't try to Place your dimension this way. You can see that this line is not parallel to this. And when you do that, it makes your work look rough and dirty, okay? So you try to make sure that the lines are parallel to the lines you are trying to show the dimension, all right? So let's just insert some dimension. We just have four dimensions there. So you can just do that this way. You can just still use the same method by setting your uh, ruler under the baseline. Then the same way you draw line BE, you can just use that same method to place your dimension line, okay? You can see that. You can see that this line now is 
parallel to this other line. Okay? So for us to do this other one now, if you don't want to waste your time, you can still just make this of your ruler. Make sure you set your ruler so that it corresponds to that line as if you are going to redraw line um, GF, then you extend the line. You can see? You can see that this line is also prior to this line. Alright? So for us to do that now, you can carefully, if you can use your eyes to gauge it and make sure the lines are parallel, it's fine. But if you can't do that, make sure you use your instrument to get all these dimension lines. Alright? So we have the last one up here, and we already have the lines there. So all you just need to do is to get your dimension line here. Okay? Now the dimensions line should be at least 10 millimeter away from, from the main drawing. Okay? Should be at least 10 millimeter away from. You can see this distance should be at least 10 millimeter away. Okay? Don't insert your dimension in such a way that it will be so close to the drawing. Alright, so take note of that. So now we can put some arrows at the end of the dimensions line. Alright, you can see that. Make sure you you draw a fine arrow so that you don't end up dating your work. Okay? So you place this this way. And uh, you, you start the arrows at all the dimensions line. Alright? You can see the way I'm doing it. Alright? You also have something like this. Alright? So that is that. The last thing we are going to do is to write the dimensions. Okay? So you see that all the dimensions are 40 uh, millimeters. So you just write the dimensions at the center of the line. So you write 40 here. Yeah. Now no need of putting millimeter at the back of 40, okay? Since they said all dimensions are in millimeter, they already know that whatever you are drawing are in millimeter. So you don't need to put millimeter at the back of the 40, okay? Just write the 40 and leave the millimeter. So you also do the same thing here. Uh, you also have the same thing here. One side I can read it as 40. Okay, very easy. If I'm standing at the bottom too, I can read this 40 and this other 40. Okay, so that is the correct way to put insert your dimensions. Now we are done with this first example. If there is, so don't try to write millimeter at the back of the dimensions given. Okay. Alright, so that is all for today. In our next class, we look into another topic. Make sure you do the assignment.